Coffee with Crime and Sugar by Shakespeare on AO3 Episode 9 Chapter 3 He shakes his head, hoping that the thoughts will come off like water, off the fur of a dog that's shaking itself dry. This is all too much thinking. He needs to shut his brain off, or perhaps lobotomize himself. It would be nice to run his brain under a steam cold water before putting it back into his skull. But at last, the groceries must be put away first, no matter how drained he feels. He cracks a window just barely enough to let out the stale air, then gets to putting away his shopping. He doesn't think he's going to have much energy to cook tonight, so instant noodles will have to suffice for his quick snacking later. Maybe if he really tries, he'll be able to get a good night's rest too. While putting away the fresh vegetables into the fridge, his ears pick up on the soft sounds on the other side of the wall. A gentle click, click, click that has to be the pilot of a burner on the stove. Perhaps Mirasaka is cooking dinner over there. That must be it. The controlled and rhythm sign of chopping, water running, something sizzling. Maybe if it's the other man that has his window open too, then Izuku would be able to smell whatever it is. How interesting. Being able to go about a Monday task after taking a lot... Damn it. There his brain goes again. Izuku shuts and latches the window. He needs a distraction. He takes his laptop to his room, as far away from the shared wall of his neighbor as possible, and pulls up a nature documentary. He's not going to make the same mistake twice and listen to another telling of a murder even if Izuku's anxiety was justified because it turned out his neighbor is dangerous. This will be better. Little baby penguins running about. The adults collecting rocks to give to potential mates. No death at all. Except for seals and sea lions. They eat penguins. Oh, and orcas. They eat penguins too. Oh, and seagulls are pretty fond of eating the baby ones. He shuts his laptop 20 minutes in. It's official. He's got murder on his mind even if it's completely unwanted. He limps starfish over his bed, a sigh escaping him as his eyes fall shut. He could really use a factory reset. He briefly wonders if it would have been better if he didn't find out about Mirasakai. To be fair, though, it was his own fault for snooping. This shouldn't be as difficult as it is. He's dealt with dangerous people before. Hell, he bets that he's even run into other killers before. There's a statistic for that somewhere. Maybe Izuku just has a hard time acting fine around alluring individuals. Alluring individuals with pretty eyes, a deep, rich voice, strong hands. Oh, Izuku is doomed. There's a knock at the front door that makes his eyes snap open. Double doomed. He sits up, the hairs on the back of his neck standing straight. He can't think of too many people who would come knocking at his door. But judging by how it's been since the arrival of the newest resident, it's not hard to put two and two together. He suck his lip in, absolutely not wanting to answer the door. But what will happen if Mirasakai, assuming that's him on the other side, very likely, becomes impatient and frustrated? Izuku should really try and stay on the man's good side. It's a matter of survivor. Can't be helped that he hesitates while heading to the door. Though, and the thought of climbing down the fire escape crosses his mind for the briefest second. But there is not really a point in that, is there? Certainly not when he's already unlocked three latches. It would be odd that even though Izuku is clearly here, he's not answering. Well, too late for a retreat. Time to face the battle head on. The rest of the locks are clicked open. Izuku's hands on the door handle. He has to take a calming breath before twisting it and pulling the door open. To avoid everyone's eyes, Mirasakai might not look that threatening. Intimidating? Definitely. Killer looks? Yes, in more than one context. While standing there on the other side of the door frame, an instructed container in hand. Hey there, neighbor. He gives us his greeting. Glad to see you're not dead. He adds as a joke. Izuku isn't quite sure how to respond to that. Anyways. Murasaki goes on. I hope that you're feeling a little better. 
And if not, I bought you some porridge so you could beat the sickness. He holds out the container to Izuku. Oh, isn't that thoughtful? Swoon-worthy, actually. What a kind killer his neighbor is. You didn't have to. Izuku says while accepting the thing. It's faintly warm in his hands when he takes it. Neighbors look out for each other. Mirasakai reasons. And besides, I was getting a little worried when you didn't come out of there for days. Even though Izuku's lip is all better now, he refrains from chewing on it in front of others. Well, I do that sometimes. I wonder why that is. Mirasakai hums. The words don't have a lift towards the end of the sentence, no signal that it's a question, yet it still comes with the implication that it'll get an answer. Won't. Izuku is keyed up, jumpy, and his stomach, the traitorous thing it is, gorgeous at that moment. There's an awkward silence, but only for a second before the taller man snorts. I should let you take care of that, Murasaki says with a quiet laugh in his voice. His mouth pulled into a smile that, gosh, it looks really well on him. I hope you get better soon, Midori. He adds before turning back to his own door. Izuku should be grateful. That stomach row, as embarrassing as it was, served to get Mirasakai to go away. But then again, all staring at the container, warming his hands, an odd thought pops into his head. One that's dumb and wouldn't make much sense, but... What are the odds it's poison? Low, right? Before his neighbor can even open his door, Izuku's calling out. Wait. Mirazaki does wait, looking at him curiously. Izuku tries not to gulp before asking. Would you like to join me? He's gone and triple doomed himself. But it was for the sake of not getting poisoned. So it's fine, right? Who is he kidding? What's the reason Mirasaki would have poisoned him? None. And he'd agreed to keep Izuku company. So if it was poison, then he'd try and find some excuse to not eat any. Clearly, there was nothing to fear, because the other is doing just fine, sitting across from Izuku at the small table with no worry. Must have gotten terribly stuffy inside for days. Mirasaki makes conversation while he and Izuku eat the not poisoned, Porridge. It did. Izuku mumbles, the steam from his food carrying the orma upwards. The smell is just like sick days as a child when his mother would make him the same thing. And terribly lonely, I imagine. The other man adds. Izuku wouldn't really say that. Sure, he's no stranger to Lonely Town, but his thoughts have been spiraling so much lately that he never felt alone. How morbid. This is good. He changes the subject. It's just simple porridge. Nothing like the tasty curry you sent me home with. Mirasaki says. I didn't get to thank you for that. And the baked goods, too. Izuku thinks it might be a bit hypocritical if he says it's fine, considering that those acts of kindness didn't have the excuse of helping a sick neighbor. So he opts to just saying nothing. All right, okay, so, um, Izuku, I am not defending you anymore. I mean, I mean, you know, the whole, I think this event does happen in the original as well. I think I vaguely remember the whole eating porridge, the whole Izuku thinking it was poisoned. So I, I know that in the original one, Izuku also does think that, um, he thinks that Hitoshi is a villain and possibly a, you know, like uh, a criminal and stuff like that. So um, not necessarily a hitman who murders, but a criminal overall who does no good deeds and stuff like that. So it's similar. Again, I have to really listen to the first one over again. It was such a good read and I need to just re-listen to it and stuff. Um, I think I listened, last time I listened to it and I didn't even finish the thing because half the time I was um, focusing on, you know, setting up my new room and stuff. But it was around January and um, it, 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 that, was, that was about nine months ago. So it's been a while. It's been a hot minute. But uh, I'm, I'm interested to seeing how this goes. I really am. Okay. As always, my raindrops, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. 
subscribe to see more of my content, and thank you so much for watching.